Uh, my name is Neil Springer. For those of you who don't know me, I've been a police officer here at uh, Parsons for going on almost 14 years. Um, currently assigned to the detective division, but I'll be rotating back to patrol here shortly. I do have Officer Dennis Dodd with me. Officer Dodd is the uh, school resource officer at Parsons High School. Uh, and he's been here four years. Three. Three years. Um, I'll go ahead and start off by saying I'm not an expert by any means. I've never been certified as, as a uh, an aggressive behavior instructor of any kind, but I have taken lots of training classes and I've done a lot of internet research and stuff on this matter. And I've kind of compiled this PowerPoint presentation for everybody. And, and mainly it, it is to keep you guys safe in your office uh, or while you're out with clients or, uh, or any other situation you might find yourself in. So we're going to talk a little bit about aggressive behavior and then I'm going to show you some neat stuff to, how to get away from somebody if they're attacking you. And, uh, I'm also going to talk about uh, some personal defense items that you can buy uh, or get on your own if you, if you wish to, to purchase them. So starting off, I need a clicker. Thank you. First thing we need to do is we need to recognize uh, an agitated individual. Because we can recognize that someone is agitated, we can try to diffuse it so that it doesn't progress into a physical altercation. Um, and, and you guys know most everything on this list. This isn't anything new to you. You guys, do, just like us, you guys deal with the same behaviors every day. Um, but just in case, we're going to refresh on them. First one is angry words, uh, verbal clues. Uh, people will tell you when they're angry or when they're agitated. And they usually don't hold it back. Um, some people are very vocal about it. Um, but things that you should, that you should worry about when they're, when they're being very, using angry language is personal attacks upon your person. If they say that they're going to, uh, you know, go out in the parking lot, wait for you to get off work, or they're going to go to your family's house and do something to your family, those are things that, that kind of bump up things a notch, that kind of raises the aggression, aggression level. Um, those are things that you should probably take uh, great caution when dealing with these people. And also, it, just any other type of threats. And most of the time, like you were saying, you got that phone call earlier today, a guy was just ranting and raving because he didn't get his check when he was supposed to. Now, a lot of times that's all they're doing is ranting and raving and they're venting. But, you know, whenever these things come out, they may be ready to step up a notch. So be cautious if that happens. The raised tone of voice, obviously. Some people just do that all the time. Greg, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> yep, ye yelling, yelling at all the employees there. Um, but no, the loud screaming um, generally doesn't necessarily dictate that they're going to do something. Usually the loud screamers are the ones that are just being loud and screaming. It's the yeah. ones that are quiet that you really should watch. Um, but anyway, out of place comments is another thing you want to watch for. Uh, out of place comments, as I say, quoting religious scriptures. Um, we've had that happen here before. A guy just he shut down and he started quoting Bible verses, and the next thing you know, he started fighting, and it didn't really have any rhyme or reason to the situation. He just he just went out. So, uh, and also talking to persons that aren't there or to talking to themselves about the situation or just brand, you know, those are things that push, should put you on edge. Nonverbal clues. This is very important because, like I said earlier, the ones that are quiet are the ones that you should worry about. It's kind of like the drunk guy in the bar, you know, the one that's running his mouth all the time. You don't really got to worry about that guy too much. He's probably not going to do nothing except run his mouth. Now, the one that's sitting there quietly staring at you with his arms crossed like this, that's a guy you might want to worry about because this is obviously this is defensive posturing. Uh, this is usually a sign of, uh, of trying to secure yourself. Uh, it's, it's a defensive move. That means he feels threatened. Uh, also, rubbing the face and neck like this, these are signs of great agitation. This is signs that they're usually going to start doing something. Um, there was a police officer, and I forget where it was at, down south. Uh, He's dealing with a, a, a drunk driver, and the officer wasn't paying any attention to the guy. He was just standing there talking. And this guy, you know, he does rubs the face, and he rolls his sleeve up like this. The next thing you know, he clocks the officer in the face. The officer never saw those verbal, those non-verbal clues that he was giving him. So, if you see that, make sure you you get ready for something bad to happen. Make sure you're ready for it. Inappropriate smiles. Um, I mean, a lot of times when you deal with somebody, and they're agitated. They'll just sit there and smile. They'll put a big fake smile on their face, and they'll just smile at you. They won't say a word. That's a that's a non-verbal clue that you should probably take to heart. That you know, you either gonna say something or do something bad here. So. Um, Clenched fist. This is an aggressive, obviously an aggressive act. It means I'm getting ready to fight. Uh, flaring nostrils. 
I mean, most agitated people generally do that because they're breathing heavy. Um, they're trying to psych themselves up usually to do something. Uh, a reddened face, that's an obvious clue. When someone gets so mad they start turning red, their blood pressure's up. That, you know, that, that means they're, that's generally a sign that they're getting ready to do something too. And obviously just blink, you know, just like staring straight at someone, not saying anything, not doing anything, just staring. Just a, it's just a dead stare. That's usually a, a sign that, that you should be prepared for something bad to happen. What we want to do to diffuse that behavior is we want to communicate effectively. And we're going to communicate effectively in two ways. First way is with our voice. Second way is with our actions. Um, first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we don't rise to the bait. Police officers are notorious for, for rising to the bait that an individual gives them. They say things to the officer to make them angry. Well, then the next thing you know, the officer's so mad he, he, he does something he shouldn't have or, or she does something she shouldn't have. We can't do that. Most of the time, these people are just doing that to get you angry so that you will do something to jeopardize your job or, or whatever. They're, they're going to win if you, if you rise to the bait. So we've got to remain calm. We can't allow them to uh, get us, get our goat, if you will. Don't let them get your goat. They're just saying that stuff to make you angry. If you don't get angry, it's going to make them, you know, they're not going to win that way. We want to maintain our calmness and control of the situation. We don't want to allow ourselves to become so agitated that we become part of the problem. So try to remember, I have to stay calm. I have to be the one in control. Be assertive with individuals, but don't be overly aggressive with the individual. If you, uh, I mean, it's quite, a, you know, aggressive people, you know, they take a step towards you, you know, you take a step back, um, they're going to see that they've got dominance over you. Well, we're going to step back because we want to make sure we get in a defensive posture. We don't want to make, we don't want to run away from them necessarily to where they're going to chase us. But uh, assertiveness is not, not being submissive. It's, it's maintaining that I'm an authority here, you're not. Um, now, obviously, we don't want you to stand there while the person hits you, but uh, make sure that they try to, they're going to try to back you down, and we want to make sure that you don't back down without uh, putting yourself in a good position. We'll talk a little bit about more of that here in a little bit. Confrontational speech, that's a big one that everybody does. They like to jaw with people that are agitated because they, they feel that they're in the position of authority and dominance, and generally, that's going to make them more <coughs> agitated and more aggressive. We have a lot, a lot of cases that we go out, wind up going out and dealing with, uh, especially people uh, that you guys work with, uh, not necessarily your agency, but other agencies uh, will go that individual into becoming overly aggressive, and then it's all of a sudden it's out of control where they just use their voice a little bit to calm that person down to begin with. We would never had to bend them. So that's kind of what we're looking at for, for your guys' help to, to help try to calm those people down. So don't humiliate them. Um, and, I, and I've seen, it, it, and it wasn't this agency at all, but there was another agency here in Parsons where the caseworker was um, blatantly humiliating this client in front, of the, in front of the police, and we wound up arresting him because uh, he, he was causing the problem. He was not the help at all. Um, and then also, don't challenge uh, the, the person that's agitated. And when I say don't challenge them, is, is, is the situations where they make veiled threats well, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to do this. Well, if they don't get out of there and you don't do that, they're going to call your bluff and they're going to know that they've got control over you. So follow through. If you're going to do something, make sure you do it. If you say, I'm going to call the police, call the police. Don't sit there and just keep talking with them. If you make, if you make that threat, make sure you follow through on it. And it's not a threat, I shouldn't say. You guys aren't threatening them. You guys are telling them what's going to happen, a consequence, if you will. But make sure you follow through with it. Uh, and, and think before you speak. That's, that's one everybody can learn from. Um, a lot of times in a heated situation, you're going to say something, and as soon as it comes out your mouth, you're going to go, oh, man, I shouldn't have said that. Um, happened to me before. Uh, stop for a second. Think about what you're going to reply before you actually say it. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Nonverbal communication. Obviously, we talked about this. If you're standing there talking, and police officers are bad about this. We have one officer on the force that he stands there like this talking to everybody, and it's just his natural stance. But it makes people mad because he, because he looks aggressive when he's standing there like this. He's just standing there listening, but people view that as an aggressive act because he's defensive, he's, he's posturing. So we're going to try to avoid doing that. 
Um, we're going to try to use open palm and open hand gestures because this is a welcoming, uh, this is a sign of welcome. This isn't an aggressive stance. This is a, I want to help you. You know, I want to make it all better. Come here, let me hug you. Um, so we want to avoid the aggressive hand movements, which is the clenched fists, rubbing our face, crossing our arms. And we want to try to be very understanding. Keep your hands in front of you. Clasp them while you talk. Um, another one, police officers are bad about it. Mean, you guys don't have to worry about that, but they do this a lot. It's just, <laughs> it's, just, it's just a handy place to put your hand. But when people see that, that's very aggressive. So we want to try to avoid stuff like that. Use intermittent eye contact. Don't stare at the individual that you're talking to, because after a while they start feeling uncomfortable, right? So we want to look at them. We want to look away, look back at them. We don't want to stare at them, because just staring at somebody that's agitated, it can trigger them. Uh, relax your facial features. Try to smile while you talk. Don't be overly fake about it, but try to relax your facial features so you don't have a grimace on your face or you know that staring glare. And then move slowly. You know, quick actions, especially around police officers, is a bad thing to do because we don't know what you're doing. It's the same thing with an agitated person. You, you make a quick, sudden movement, they're going to think you're attacking them. They might trigger you into fighting. So try to move slowly. And when I say blade your body, what I mean is, is stand like this with, with the person in front of you. Um, now, you know, if I square up on somebody like this and they charge me, what's my first move? I'm going to have to step back or turn. If I step back, He's still coming at me, right? If I've got my foot planted here and he comes at me, I can pivot away, I can pivot away, and I don't have to turn, I don't have to turn my back to him, and I'm not walking backwards where I'm more likely to trip. So keep yourself bladed when you talk to somebody, and uh, it gives you a lot more options to escape when it comes down to it. Next slide, please. Uh, here's a big one. Mentally prepare yourself. For these things to happen because as you guys know it's going to happen it's probably already happened to most of you um, so know your surroundings wherever you're at if you're at work know where the exits are know where the nearest uh, co-worker is that you can get help know where the phones are uh, have an escape route in mind say somebody you know you know we've had a lot of uh, publicity here lately with public shootings with whether it be schools malls or whatever you know i hate to scare anybody but that, that could happen here so Prepare yourself for something like that to happen. If you're in the basement of, of, of the skill building over there and you hear gunshots upstairs, have a plan in mind. What are you going to do when that happens? How are you going to get out? Are you going to hide? What are you going to do? <laughs> Think about it. We, we call it the what-if game, and police officers are trying to play it from day one, and, and it could save your life someday. It, it saved mine once. Um, you, you, as you drive around on patrol, we spend a lot of time thinking, well, what, if that, what happens if that car runs a stop line in front of me? You know. Prepare yourself for that to happen. And that happened to me. I was prepared for this lady to run the stop sign, and she sure did. And I, I was able to avert the accident because I was ready for it. I knew it was going to happen. Now, if I hadn't been paying her any attention, I never saw her come out, and she would have pl probably plowed into me. Uh, don't let yourself become trapped. If you're, uh, especially we talked about this last time, there's some bad spots at, in the skill building where you have to go through one area to get out. We've got some ways that we're going to try to help correct that, but try to try to know if your back's somewhere where you can't get through somewhere. Try to avoid being there if you can. And, and this is more like if you're out on a like a uh, like at a residence or something. Try to keep your back to the door. Try not to let the the agitated person be between you and the door, so you don't have to go through them. Make sure you're, you try to keep your back. I mean, it's not always going to happen, but you can try it. Um, look around for weapons. A lot of times uh, you'll see knives, baseball bats, anything like that, just laying in a, in a residence because uh, they're going to be there. Those are normal household items. If you see those out and about, keep a middle note. I want to keep him away from the knives in the kitchen. And we're going to stand here in the living room and talk. Those are just certain, you know things you can do to keep yourself safe. And then let someone know where you are. Um, I know we're all bad about going out. You know, police officers aren't. We, we keep that little radio and dispatch knows where we're at. Usually, anytime we go out to a house or on a call, dispatch knows where we're at. In case we walk in there and something bad happens, they know they need to send somebody to check on us. Same thing goes for you guys. If you guys are are out on a call uh, on a call for assistance, or I don't know, I don't really know how your system, your agency works real well, but I know that there's times where you go to re residences to do home visits and things like that. Let someone know where you're going before you go there. Just in case this happens, when you don't come back after a while, they'll know to keep to, to check on you. 
Um, a lot of that falls under don't put yourself in bad situations. Uh, if you know you're in a bad situation, in a bad situation, don't just stay there, get out of it. Um, so we've all found ourselves uh, on the police force where you're standing there, and uh, I use the baseball bats in the living room as a key example. I'm talking to three very agitated individuals, and there's baseball bats scattered about the living room, and, and I start feeling that uncomfortable feeling that I'm in a bad situation. So I, uh, I kind of meandered my way back to the door, and I got myself to the door, and, uh, and granted, I wound up getting back up there, and it, and it turned out all right, but if I'd have stayed out with them blocking my way from the door, I would have been in a bad, I would have been in a bad situation, world hurt. So try to avoid those. Uh, redirect, redirect the individual's focus. Whenever someone's agitated, they're usually agitated over something. It's, it's usually, you know, the guy that didn't get his check. That's what he's mad about. Well, try to try talking about being mad about that. Give him the alternative. Say, you know, we'll send you another one. You know, we'll send it for review. Whatever you're going to do, try to redirect their focus off of being angry about this into give them a goal. Give them something that they can uh, orient their their anger toward to turning it into you know something positive. Where you know now I'm looking forward to getting another check come in. Uh, just try to find out something they might even like to talk about. Do a little background, a little research on your people. That way, um, when you get in these bad situations, you know, say, say uh, John Doe has a grandma that he loves a lot, and you know that person starts getting angry. You know, this is, so what, you know, what about your grandma? Wouldn't your grandma get pretty mad at you if you were doing this right now? You know, try to change the subject on them, and they maybe maybe they'll they'll break their thought process. And they'll they'll redirect their focus. We talked about mental preparedness, and the first thing I want you to prepare for is make. Prepare that your plan is not going to work for you. Um, this is why if you get in a situation and you've been practicing this escape plan and you get ready to do the escape plan, all of a sudden it don't work. Now what do you do? You know, if you're trying to do something and it doesn't work, you're going to stand there dumbfounded and not know what to do. So prepare for it not to work. Try to think of something else to do. Be prepared to protect yourself uh, at any time. Uh, if you, like I say, if you what if yourself, what if this guy punches me in the face, what am I going to do? Um, if you say to yourself, well, he's probably going to knock me out, I'm going to fall on the ground, that's probably what's going to happen to you. Um, when I first came to Parsons, I went to LCC College, and uh, the first day of my first law enforcement class ever, the instructor says, write down on a sheet of paper your answer to this question. And she said, uh, you're a patrol officer. Uh, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, all these details, you know, it's a dark street, you pull over a car for speeding. As you walk up to the driver's side door, uh, the driver of the car pulls out a gun and shoots you five times. What do you do? You know, myself included, everybody in the class wrote, oh crap, I'm dead, or oh, I'm, I'm going to die, da 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 One person wrote, shoot back. And that's what I'm talking about, preparing yourself mentally. You prepare yourself mentally that if you get shot, I'm going to shoot back. I'm not going to die. I got too much stuff to live for. Um, a lot of times, you're going to live through situations where normal people would die because they're convinced they're going to die. Human mind's a it's a wonderful and terrible thing all at once. But you can convince yourself you're going to live through a situation uh, by preparing yourself mentally. Not every time. I'm not going to say you're going to be, you know, invincible, but you can prepare yourself for these things to happen, and you're going to know how to react to them when they happen. So think about these things. Next slide, please. And the main thing to remember is, like we're saying, just do something. Don't just stand there and allow somebody to hit you, curl up in the ball, because they'll kick you until they're tired of kicking you. Um, and sometimes that works. Sometimes you will curl up in a little ball and they'll walk away. A lot of times it doesn't. They'll keep kicking you until they feel like they're done kicking you. I'm going to take my chances. I'm going to try to fight my way out. That's me, though. Um, I was told this in a self-defense class several years ago. The best way to keep from being hit is to not be there when the punch is thrown. And that's, that's why we played our body. That's why we prepare to have an escape plan. Because when they go throw that punch, I'm two steps back, he can't hit me. Because I'm ready for it to come. So try not to be there when they throw the punch at you. And then just, just move. Try to move, escape, try to survive. Don't just lay there. Because um, it usually doesn't work out very well when you just lay there. Next slide, please. All right, defense moves. Now I'll ask my handy partner to come on up. Um, this is one thing they teach us right here. Distance equals safety. 
we have what we call a reactionary gap. We don't like people coming within our bubble. I don't know if you guys have heard that term. Police officers have a really big bubble. Um, and we like keeping people about 12 to 15 feet away. The reason for 12 to 15 feet away is by the time if I were to stand over there against the wall and let's say Officer Dodd had a knife, by the time I could get my gun out and shoot him, he would stab me already. It takes that long for him to cover, especially Dennis, because he's <laughs> very, very fast. <laughs> Ex-college athlete, you know, he, he's very fast, but he, even someone who's not a college athlete could cover a good fair amount of distance in a very short amount of time. Because uh, it takes you uh, three quarters of a second to react to stimulus, generally. Now, if, it, if he were to start running at me, it would take him three quarters of a second. Uh, for me, it would take me three quarters of a second to react to what he was doing. In three quarters of a second, he's probably already three steps towards me. And then by the time my action, which takes another quarter of a second, he's another step. And then by the time I complete my action, he's on me. There ain't much I can do. Um, and I'd, I'll demonstrate. I, I, I would demonstrate that for you, but I don't. I don't. I don't have a red gun with me. Um, but but just take my word for it. People can cover ground in a very short amount of time. So try to keep yourself, especially an agitated person, stay back from them. Uh, the charging attacker. This is one of those things where I tell you, blade your body. Um, don't be there when the punch is thrown. If he comes charging at me, my first instinct is to get away from him. So sidestep him like 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 a bullfighter. You know, Ole. That's the same principle. When the person charges at you, you want to pivot yourself away from them, and then if you can, get a hold of them and push them, and their own momentum will take them past you. So don't just stand there while the person's running at you. Move, okay? Um, let's say you're talking to somebody, and this happens a lot, when you're talking to somebody and you go to turn away from them and walk away because you're done talking to them, they grab you by the wrist and they won't let go. Um, how are you going to get out of this? This is the most simple move. I guarantee you that every person in here can escape my grasp just by doing this. And I want you guys to try that with yourself real quick. Just when the person grabs you, this is the thumb, right? This is the weak part of the hand. All you do is you rotate your hand up, over, and out. Don't stop if you can't get them loose. Just keep going. Everybody try that with a partner. As you rotate, your focal point should be the thumb. Just rotate up toward the thumb. He's not going to be able to hold you with the thumb. Even squeezing. Um, he's not going to be able to just hold that. Next one. Let's say they grab you by the clothing. This is a, this is a big one. Everybody likes to grab you and pull you close so they can yell at you in your face. So, when he grabs me by my clothing, be prepared for your shirt to rip. Okay? Don't freak out. It may happen. But what I'm going to do, there's several ways you can do this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right hand, because I'm right-handed, and I'm going to wedge it between his arms like this. Y'all see that? I got my elbow up over the top of this one, and I got my hand underneath this one. And I'm gonna, like I'm praying right here, I'm gonna take this hand and I'm gonna smack it as hard as I can. And and be prepared for your shirt to get ripped off you when when we did this uh, a couple weeks ago at Skill, my shirt did rip. <laughs> so once again, one hand under, and it depends on which hand you want to. I mean you can use either hand. If you feel stronger for striking with your right hand, use that. But basically one arm over, this one's under, grab, or take that and strike it and push your hands away as far as you can, hard as you can, and just strike them off. Another one you can do is when he's, when he's grabbing like this, remember we talked about thumbs being weak? I'm going to grab both of his thumbs, I'm going to crank them as hard as I can. Ouch, ouch. <laughs> yeah, that, that hurts a lot. So that's another way to get those hands off of you. Um, I don't know if we want to try that one. I don't want anybody ripping their shirts out. Uh, let's say being choked here. He's choking me, right? Once again, weak points right here. So we either grab his thumbs and pull him away, or the same thing works. The same thing works. Um, let's say we're being uh, grabbed from behind. Uh, now this, he's, he can't get his arms around because I'm a big dude. But even smaller people, the first thing you want to do is lower your center of gravity, and that's as simple as doing this. 
Now he's a bad spot because I can just go like that. <laughs> but once I'm down here, I want to bring my arms down as well. It's one fluid motion. When you're when you're stuck in like that, you just it's it's kind of like a like a low range jumping jack. But that's what it's designed for. He comes off get off balance because he's now he's leaning over, and it's a lot more. And then another one if he's grabbed me on there again, is once I'm down here. See, I just moved. That's all you got to do is just keep moving. Next slide, please. Oh, um, before we go that, let's say we're getting choked from behind. Go ahead and choke me. Right here. <laughs> now he's got my throat, right? <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my chin to push through. And I can keep talking while he's choking me. And I'm still getting there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that whole time, I was still able to talk. Because I closed my uh, windpipe down. Now, he's got real thin arms, so he was getting me really good. Yeah. But most of the times, you got somebody with big arms like me, you're going to get your chin down underneath it. And you're going to be able to breathe like that for a good period of time. Because the whole time he was choking me, I was still getting air. It wasn't much air, <laughs> but it was a little bit of air. It was enough to keep me alive and keep me fighting. So just remember, once again, drop your center of gravity. Duck your chin and then move. Do something to get out. Okay. Uh, next slide. Kurumasu Jutsu. This is a, a style of fighting, uh, basically defense, that was by for people who are, are bound to wheelchairs. But it also be done from your office chair, uh, just from a sitting position. But it was mainly designed for, for persons who are in wheelchairs. And I don't have a wheelchair today. But I can use a chair, so don't blame me if I use my legs a little bit. It's habit. Um, first thing we want to do, lock your brakes. Um, if someone's going to come, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll grab the back of your chair and they'll shove you. First thing you want to do is lock your brakes. And if you got good enough brakes on your chair, when you stop the brakes, he's going to hit you. He's going to stop. Uh, his forward momentum will either slow or stop by running into you. It'll cause him to run in the back of the chair. And a lot of is by locking one wheel and rotating, you're gonna, it's like the bolt fighter, Ole. You lock one wheel and spin your chair, and his forward momentum will take him past you. Uh, the strike and throw, um, if, I'm, if I'm in a chair and a gentleman comes from behind me, um, let's, say, let's just say he grabs me from the back. Well, if, if I'm able, I have, I have my fist. I'm going to pop him in the face, I'm going to grab something, pull him down, pull him away, uh, and that, that's one you can do if you can get a wheel, if you've got a wheelchair that'll do it, you can pivot and pull at the same time, which will cause them to go past you. Uh, and, that, and that's really hard for me to show you without having mats and everything where I can show you how you flip them, but yeah, believe me, this guy figured it out and he's shown it around the world. You can grab people and flip them from your wheelchair without without uh, having use of your legs. Next slide, please. Um, chokes or frontal grabs. Let's say the attacker's in front of me now. Let's say he grabs my let's say he grabs my shirt. Let's do this. Let's say he grabs my shirt. Same moves work for a sitting position as a standing one. Same moves work, okay? But here's a new one. Let's say he's bent down and choking me. What, what's, the, what's his bad spot right now? Yeah. yeah. Bang. <laughs> but he's also off balance. So go ahead and come back down. I can reach up, grab. If he's got hair, it's a lot easier. But grab the back of the head and the chin, twist sideways and pull it down toward you. If you do it hard enough, you may, I'm, I'm being honest with you, you could kill them by snapping their neck. But um, by any means, you're pulling them off balance and pulling them down. To the ground, and if you back your chair up while you're pulling, you could eventually you could flatten them on the ground and go, or until help gets there, whatever. Uh, that's that's one we already talked about. Okay, here's another good one. Let's say let's say you've got a power chair. Go ahead and grab me again. Yeah, however you want to do it. If you can, lock on and go in reverse. I mean, I know some of those chairs go pretty darn fast. You can pull somebody off balance real easy with them. Uh, 
Here's another good one. Your uh, your feet. What do they call them? Stirrups. What are they? Footrest. Footrest. Those are a weapon. Ram them right into his shins. That would hurt pretty bad. Because there's no meat right here, guys. That's all bone. And you ram a big solid metal chair into that, that's going to hurt. Attacks from the side is it's kind of the same thing. It's just re rehashing. If he's on the side of me, once again, I've got, I've got strikes. I've got whatever I can grab and pull. Um, whatever I need to do. And that's that modified sweep kick thing I was telling you about. Ram your chair into his legs. And if, and if the, if the, let's say this is the footrest, catches him hard enough and in the right spot, that might hurt just a little bit. <laughs> just, just, just that little tap hurt just a little bit. Imagine a, a full speed spin of a wheelchair cracking him right there. It could cause him to fall. Next slide. Um, okay. Kind of in here. Main thing is, is just do something. Don't don't just take there. Don't just stay there and take it. Keep trying something until you can get away. Don't ever give up because when you give up, you know it'll it be over. So 